All right, this is part two of the acids and bases PowerPoint video thingy, whatever you want to call this. Um, if you want to follow along on your own PowerPoint, if you're watching this on a device that you can look at both of them at the same time, I am going to be jumping around a little bit, so just follow along with whatever you can. I will be starting on 21, slide 21. This is the types of acids and bases. Yesterday I went over the Brunsted-Lowry model, and today I can go through the Arrhenius model and the Lewis model. These are three different types of acids and bases. The homework last night covered how uh, Brunsted-Lowry acids and bases worked. Arrhenius and Lewis both are acids and bases, but they are a little bit different when it comes to how they work. So, Arrhenius acids contain H+, plus and they ionize to form H+. Plus. So for some examples, HCl ionizes to make H+, plus and Cl-. minus. Since it goes through this change and makes these two things, we call HCl an Arrhenius acid. HNO3, same thing. HNO3 breaks apart, you get H+, plus and NO3-. minus. That has ionized to make H+, plus, meaning it's an Arrhenius acid. Arrhenius bases are, instead of H+, plus, they have OH-. Minus. If you have something that has OH and it ionizes pro to produce OH, that gives you an Arrhenius base. So NaOH, if that ionizes, you get Na+, plus and OH-. Minus. With CaOH2, that gives you Ca2+, plus and two OH-. Minuses. Again, once you have the OHs that are bumped out, or OH- minuses that are bumped out, this makes the solution basic, and therefore NaOH and CaOH2 are bases. The next slide here is the Bronsted-Lowry model, but you've already seen how this works, so this is slide 25. Let's skip down to slide 29. All right, the last type is the Lewis model of acids and bases, where a Lewis acid is an atom ion or molecule that accepts an electron pair to form a covalent bond, and a Lewis base is an atom ion or molecule that donates an electron pair to form a covalent bond. So accepts versus donates electron pairs. So Lewis model has to do with electron pairs. The Arrhenius model has to do with movement of H plus and OH minus. Bronsted-Lowry is with protons, or H plus going uh, back and forth to have a donor or an acceptor. Do not get these mixed up. Make sure you know the difference between a Lewis acid or base, a Bronsted-Lowry acid or base, or an Arrhenius acid or base. You'll see problems that will ask for which one's which later, and you'll get the hang of it. Just for now, know that that's the difference. So, in a Lewis acid or base reaction, the formation of one or more covalent bonds between an electron pair donor and an electron pair acceptor is what happens. It's not that protons jump from one thing to another or that H plus or OH minus gets bumped off. Electrons form a covalent bond. So, the next thing is conjugate acid base pairs, but we've already done this, so jump down to slide 38, which is where we left off before. Slide 38 has monodi and triprotic acids listed on here. The definitions are right there. Mono means one, di means two, and tri means three. So monoprotic is if you have one ionizable proton. Mono, one, protic, proton. Diprotic, two ionizable protons. Triprotic, three ionizable protons. So if it has HF or HCl, there's just one proton in there, it has one ionizable proton. We say that this means it has a normality of 1. Diprotic is 2, triprotic is 3. Pretty easy to remember. Polyprotic is another term that you might have to know, where if you have an acid that has multiple H pluses that can break off of it, it might break off one at a time. So H3PO4 can break off one hydrogen first, before all three break off. It can then do another one, and then another one. This is a triprotic acid that 
functions as a polyprotic acid because each hydrogen breaks off one by one. The next subject involves strong acids and bases, and strong acids and bases completely ionize in solution. So if you have HA, where A is just an example of some strong acid or base anion, if it goes through 100% of ionization, you should get H plus and A minus for every HA that you had at the beginning. As for a base, XOH, let's say the X is the cation associated with whatever base we're involved in. If you take that and 100% ionize it, you get X plus and OH minus. Now, every single HA molecule ionizes into H plus and A minus, and every single molecule of XOH ionizes into X plus and OH minus. This is what makes a strong acid or a base a strong acid or a base. Just to give an illustration of it, if you have HA, just a whole bunch of HAs, what happens is the hydrogen and whatever it's bonded with breaks up in every situation that you have. You aren't left with any H and A bonded on this side. There are six strong acids, and these you must memorize. You must memorize these for a quiz. So let's say on a quiz, I'll say which of the following is a strong acid, and one of these will be an answer choice. Hydrochloric, hydrobromic, hydroiodic, perchloric, sulfuric, and nitric acids are all very, very strong. If you have concentrated versions of all of these acids, they will have no problem burning through your skin. Just to show a video of this in action for funsies, here's a video of hydrochloric acid, which is one of these strong acids, eating through a Coke can. Now, currently it's the one on the left. The one on the right, or now left, they keep on switching them. The other one is sodium hydroxide. Notice that the base is actually having more of an effect than the acid. So you usually think of acids as incredibly strong things that will eat through anything, but in this case, yes, it's eating through the can, but the strong base is eating through it even better. By the way, I know the frame rate on this video is pretty bad, so I'm going to put a link either on the video or in the description if you want to see this entire experiment. The only thing that makes a strong base a strong base is if you have group 1 and 2 metals with hydroxides. Li, Na, K, Rb, Mg, Ca, Sr, Ba, all those elements which are on the leftmost side of the periodic table are what make the strong bases. You need to memorize that this is what makes a strong base, but you don't need to memorize obviously Li, Na, K, Rb, just all this stuff. Anything in the alkali metals or the alkaline earth metals on the periodic table combined with hydroxide makes a strong base. So again, you don't have to memorize these, but you do have to know that those are what make the strong bases. What makes a weak acid or a base is an acid or a base that partially ionizes. So HA goes to H plus and A minus partially, and XOH going to X plus and OH partially. An illustration of this is if you have three HAs and you go to the reaction that we did before where just H and A split apart with H plus and A minus as a result, the HAs that you have left over may not do that. Weak acids are ones that do not ionize entirely. So which acids are the weak acids and which bases are the weak bases? Anything that's not a strong acid or a base is a weak acid or a base. I mean, it's really that easy. If it's not a strong one, it's a weak one. There are no mediums here. So, strong or weak, you can have something that's concentrated or diluted. This jumps back to the last unit. For acids and bases, it's important to distinguish between concentrated and dilute from strong and weak. 
The words strong and concentrated have different meanings, and similarly, weak and dilute aren't the same either. Now, they sound the same, and they mean generally the th same thing when you speak of etymology, but they don't mean or describe the same thing in this unit. Strong and weak refer to how much the substance ionizes in solution, and concentration and dilute, or concentrated and dilute, refer to how much solute is present. So, in a solution of HCl in water, hydrochloric acid in water, that's a strong acid, if you don't have very much hydrochloric acid in the water, it will be dilute. So you'd have a dilute strong acid. As some examples, one molar HCl, that's basically what I just mentioned. It is strong and dilute. One molar is not incredibly high, but HCl is a strong acid. 12 molar, however, is very high, and HCl is a strong acid, so it is strong and concentrated. H2CO3 is not a strong acid, it is a weak acid, with one molarity meaning it's dilute. H2CO3, same acid, is still weak, but higher molarity means it's concentrated. Alright, now that you know what weak and strong means in respect to concentrated and dilute, we can consider an ion product constant for water. This is an equilibrium value for self-ionization of water. Now, you guys might have this symbol in your PowerPoints. This should be a double-sided arrow, so an arrow pointing one way and an arrow pointing the other way. Um, I didn't take it out of mine just because I figured you'd be wondering. Anyway, that means that H2O would go back and forth between H2O and H plus and OH minus. So, this is the formula for what you'll be doing in this unit, where if you have Kw, that is the ion product constant for water, the concentration of H plus times the concentration of OH minus equals 1 times 10 to the negative 14. So, this is scientific notation, and we will be working in concentrations in scientific notation. And the brackets in there, those brackets mean concentration. For pure water, H plus equals OH minus concentration, and therefore, if you do the math, 1 times 10 to the negative 7 molarity is what each one should equal. So if H plus is 1 times 10 to the negative 7, and OH minus is 1 times 10 to the negative 7, if you look back at the equation, multiply those two together, and you get a power of negative 14. That being said, remember that pure water is neutral. We'll get to the pH scale soon, but this 1 times 10 to the negative 7 for both OH minus and H plus means that it is neutral. So, in non-pure water, basically making acidic or basic conditions, the value of H plus and OH minus differ. So the concentrations of H plus and OH start changing, meaning it gets more acidic or more basic, depending on what happens in different situations. In any case, H plus and OH minus concentrations multiplied still equal 1 times 10 to the negative 14. This always happens. No matter what H plus is, no matter what OH is, it is always 1 times 10 to the negative 14. So, take a look at a few situations. If something is acidic, it will have more H plus concentration than OH minus. H plus making something acidic. Basics the other way around, and neutral is when they're equal. Alright, last subject of this part of the PowerPoint, pH and pOH. You've probably heard of pH before, you maybe have heard of pOH, but probably not. So, pH is this equation. pH equals negative log of the concentration of H+. Now, before we go on, I want you to find one of your graphing calculators. If you're watching this in class, find a graphing calculator. If you're not, uh, check next time you get to class. Look for the button that says log. When you're putting this into a calculator, it looks just like this, except instead of, parent, uh, instead of brackets, you have parentheses. So what you'd plug in would be negative log, and then whatever number you have. The scale ranges from 0 to 14. This pH scale, which you may have seen before, elementary school, middle school, somewhere around there, has a section that is acidic and a section that is basic. 
water, the pure water, is right at the center. It is neutral. Anything with a pH lower than this is acidic. Anything with a pH higher than this is basic. So going from 7 down to 6, down to 5, down to 4, any, that change is ambiguous unless you know what the difference in numbers mean. Now, a change in one pH unit represents a tenfold change in strength. So, if we look back at the pH scale, a pH of 7 is 10 times more acidic than a pH of 8. And a pH of a 7 is 10 times more basic than a pH of 6. So, just another example here, pH of 3 is 10 times 1 or 10 times more acidic pH of 7 to 10, however, is 10 to the third power, or 1,000 times more acidic. pOH works the exact same way as pH, but instead of using the concentration of H+, you use the concentration of OH-. The way these relate, just like how your equation before had a power of negative 14 for the value of Kw, pH plus pOH equals 14. If you're given one, subtract 14 by it to solve for the other. The overall relationship is where you have pH, pOH, H plus, and OH minus all related using those equations. First example, calculate the pH of a solution with H plus equaling 3 times 10 to the negative 6 molarity. So what you need to do is go from H plus to pH. Your equation here is H plus, the concentration. Finding the pH is what you need to do with that. Plug it in, have a number. Another calculation involves pH coming from OH concentration. First thing you can do is you can plug the OH into the pOH equation solve for pOH, then use the pH plus pOH equals 14 thing, plug in for pOH, because you just solved that right here, and solve for pH. Pretty simple process, but the more examples you look at, the better you get at it. Sample problem three is what if you're given H plus concentration of a solution with pH two, you have your equation, pH equals negative log of H plus. And now here's the thing. You are given your pH, but not your concentration of H plus. You therefore have to scramble up the equation, and you get this thing. H plus equals 10 to the negative pH. It looks weird, and the log has disappeared. Log is 10 raised to a power backwards. That's the definition of log. So if you take this equation and reverse it, you get this one. Plug in numbers, there's your answer. Last problem, what is the OH concentration of a solution with a pOH of 3.7? This is your pOH equation rearranged so that you don't use log, you use the opposite of log, which is 10 raised to the negative pOH. Plug in a number, and you get a number. Thank you for listening to me babble. I'll be posting another one of these videos tomorrow. I hope they help. If they don't, then, oh, uh, well, I tried. Whatever. In any case, uh, make sure you can get your homework done. Submit it to Edmodo. We'll see what happens with that. Uh, let me know if you have any questions on Edmodo. I will answer them as soon as I see them. We'll see what happens. And I have one question for you. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here?